Hello. So I wanted to start a new series here about sound design because a lot of the questions that I get are about that. Um, so I thought, you know, what can I show that would be useful, you know, in your own life? So we're just going to talk about how I go about thinking how sound works and how I create my own sounds. Uh, mostly I work in analog, but I work in digital too. So this course is going to cover grandmother as our analog example. We're going to use Serum as our computer-based digital synth because it's very popular for EDM. And we're going to use Omnisphere as well because that's very popular for film scoring. Uh, so you'll learn those three things and let's be off. Um, so the first lesson we're talking about oscillators. So what is an oscillator? It's labeled here, but what does it do? It's something that vibrates fast enough to make a sound. That's it at its core, in, in terms of electricity, we're still vibrating, we're cycling. The other way to think about oscillators is, what does this sound like? Um, so the oscillator chooses your sound. Right now I've only got one oscillator, and we'll give you some examples. Uh, so we have a triangle wave. So not particularly loud or cutting. If we go to sawtooth, that's our loud, more cutting sound. We have square wave. It gives you the old Nintendo vibes. And we have a pulse, which is just a square wave, but you know, compressed on one side. Uh, so that's it. That's the sounds that the grandmother can make. Um, we have two oscillators and then potentially a third oscillator. For example, um, this would normally be your LFO, which stands for low frequency oscillator. And what it does typically is you assign it to something and it changes the other thing. Like if I take my wave out to my pitch in, it's just going to make the pitch go up and down. Yeah, all the way to failure. Okay, so that's what it does um, when it's moving that slowly. But when it's moving quickly, it can become an oscillator. Uh, so this is the trick with modular, right? Because uh, modular gives us more options. In a digital synth, typically you can't make an LFO go what's called audio rate. But for your example here, here's my LFO. I plugged it into noise. So right now, you know, there's no sound because the oscillator is moving so slow. But when I turn it way up, we start to get a note. And we're just controlling the pitch there with the rate. I can also plug the keyboard into the rate, and then it'll follow the keyboard. Right? Uh, so from this, you can do a lot, actually, because we have three oscillators running now. So I could have three notes, technically. Uh, so here's our first note, our second note. And I tuned it to a different note. This is about a fifth. Let's get that in tune. better and then noise let's find the match <laughs> so you get the idea um, that's all just from this simple setup so now we're gonna cut over to serum and talk about the rest all right we're back with serum uh, so this is uh, pretty popular w among EDM producers this is a wavetable synthesizer um, so what does that mean? Um, it just means we load mathematical models of waves into the oscillator. In essence, it's still the same thing because the oscillator is still defining like what is this sound. Um, so we start out with you know pretty basic sawtooth, but this thing does a lot. <laughs> like all computer-based stuff, you know, sky's the limit. Um, you even have um, waves you can sort of cycle cycle through all kinds of different sounds um, you can even go out and buy more uh, so here's a bunch of that I bought um, just cool sounds uh, more more for you know hard styled music dubstep things like that um, so yeah this, this is kind of like the power you get really into the power of like the computer with these um, so that's really all there is to it. In Serum, you have two oscillators, oscillator A and B. Each one can ha have a, a unison mode, so you can have like tons of waves. Um, 
coming out of this, it's sort of the sky is the limit in terms of, you know, whatever your computer processor can handle. Um, so we're going to slowly walk through this synth with sound design too. Um, but the thing to know is, you know, we load in waves to our wavetable and this determines the sound we're beginning with. All right, let's switch over to Omnisphere. And here we are with Omnisphere. Uh, so when you load this up, it kind of tends to come in the main page or you load a, a program here. Um, I'm just looking at this in terms of oscillator table here. Uh, so Omnisphere has four oscillators, which is bananas. And underneath each oscillator is FM, ring modulation, wave shaping, unison, Harm, you can do some harmonic presets here, uh, so it plays chords for you, and a granular sort of sampler engine, too. Um, so this thing goes deep. Basically, all the stuff you would expect, uh, you can load lots of different wavetables. Again, sim similar to Serum, you know, lots of different mm -hmm. math equations of synthesis. And then we've also sort of like attempted to do a mathematical model of some classic synths. Also, you can load samples in here. Anything you can think of. Um, you can buy samples. You can go into a file directory and load your own samples. Um, so yeah, tons and tons of stuff. They've even recorded some classic synthesizers here. Um, so there's like, you know, the actual recording of the JP-80. I don't know where you stand as a purist or not. I'm not such a purist. I do like analog synths, but boy, this saved me a lot of money. We, we don't um, just modulate synthesis. We can modulate recordings of other things, too. And that's where the power of Omnisphere comes in. Um, that's where why a lot of film people like to use it, because you're applying synthesis to samples in a way that isn't traditionally done. And we've got tons of wavetables, and you can buy them. That is the, your intro to Omnisphere. We've got four oscillators, A, B, C, and D. And then, you know, within it, there'll be some modulation. Uh, so... I hope that helps, and let me know if you have any questions. If you want this series to continue, let me know. If you don't want it, let me know. Uh, I thought I would kind of go step by step through each synthesizer and kind of see, you know, how I approach building a sound, how I approach sound design. Uh, the next thing we'll probably talk about is what are we intending to sound like with each oscillator and, you know, give you some suggestions for that stuff. All right, take care.